Hi, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Sue, and today we're going to make one of my favorite dishes, and it is a simple home style recipe that Greek people would make quite often for dinner, but it's delicious and I love it. It's chicken with minestra, and minestra is a special noodle. It's called orzo when you find it in the stores. It's like this. It's wonderful. It's kind of a rice-shaped noodle and rice-shaped pasta, and it's absolutely delicious. It is my favorite, favorite pasta. I love to eat it. I love to cook it. So let's get started. To make chicken minestra, of course, you need to have chicken. Two to three pounds of cut-up chicken pieces. And you'll need the minestra. It's the special rice-shaped pasta. You'll find it in your grocery stores. Some brands of pasta have it in boxes. Sometimes you'll find it in the bulk food section with specialty pastas. You'll need a small can of tomato paste. And this is one of those dishes that has the combination of cinnamon and tomato. So you'll need some cinnamon, some allspice, some nutmeg, and oregano. Also in the dish, you'll need some vegetables. Of course, you'll need a large onion, two to four cloves of garlic, and two carrots chopped up. To put this all together, you'll need also some olive oil, salt, and pepper to taste. For this recipe and all the other recipes we've used on this show, be sure to look us up on our website, tweetin.com. Not only will you find the recipes for this show, but you'll find other interesting links to Greek sites, sites that will tell you more about Greek culture and give you some even more interesting recipes. Any dish that requires you're using raw chicken, you should always wash the chicken first. Just run the chicken carefully under cold water, cold tap water, and dry it. I usually just put a few uh, sheets of paper towels on a plate and dry the chicken. The threat of salmonella poisoning is real with any kind of raw meat, so you need to be careful when you're dealing with raw meat. Now, I wash the chicken. I got rid of any little bits of crud, you know, little bits of blood and other things. But I have yet to find any chicken, cut up chicken pieces from the grocery store that I think are pan ready. There's always excess skin, excess fat, and all kinds of strange things that need to be trimmed away. And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to use um, a kitchen shears and I'll show you the, the kind of thing that I get rid of. If you wanted to, you could get rid of the uh, skin altogether, but I'm not going to do that today. But I want to get rid of excess pockets of skin and pockets of fat. But we don't need all that. Now look at this. This is a chicken breast. Now why do you get a chicken breast? Because it's supposed to be leaner than chicken thighs. But how lean is it going to be when it's got this huge glob of fat? So this is one of the things I use a chicken she a kitchen, sorry, kitchen shears and just trim it off. And there's a little flap of excess skin that I trim off too. And anything else that I don't like, like this blood vessel thing. Alright, here's another breast. It's got a glob of fat to remove. If you're squeamish, you shouldn't serve food. You've got to be able to get in there and trim up your food so it's better tasting and healthier for your family. Now here, this breast has this flap of skin hanging down here, so I'm going to trim that off. And it's got a flap of skin here. Okay, my chicken is all clean. I've gotten rid of all the excess fat, all the little strange pieces of skin and other little unnecessary things. But now I've got chicken hands, raw chicken hands, and raw chicken scissors. 
I've got to clean these before I go on. And also I want to clean the sink where I rinse the chickens because this can be a breeding ground for uh, salmonella just as these things and just as my hands. So it's important to take the step to really clean things well. So first thing, I'm going to take care of my hands. I'm going to wash my hands in very warm water using a lot of soap. This time I'm going to go under my nails to make sure that I don't have any hidden little pockets of chicken fat or whatever in my nails. This is important. You really do need to clean up after using any kind of raw meat. Now I go to the utensil I use, whether it would have been a knife or this kitchen shears. Rinse it under very warm water, then turn your water to the hottest it can get and rinse it. Even if you were going to put it in the dishwasher, you'd want to do this because you don't want any disease coming off these shears while they're kind of hanging around waiting to be loaded. Now for the sink. If you recall, I rinsed the chicken pieces and some of that chickeny water had to have splattered in the sink. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take my detergent and put a little in the sink and wipe it down with a sponge, including the drain area and this part here where I may have touched it and this part here where my chickeny hands may have touched. Okay, that's the first step and rinse this with warm water. If you have one of the kitchen antibacterial sprays purchased from a grocery store or drugstore, you could do that as a second step. Just spray. Or you can do what I do, and I keep a bottle, spray bottle, underneath my sink of a bleach uh, solution. It's half bleach, half water. And whenever I use a cutting board where I'm cutting up raw meat, raw chicken, or I use my sink for rinsing chicken or fish, I spray this bleach solution so my family won't get sick from the cooking I've done. Now the last thing that's left is the sponge. I've rinsed, I've had soap in it, I've rinsed it out, now I'm going to put it in the microwave for one minute, 30 seconds, and that'll kill any bacteria that's in this sponge. As with almost any Greek cooking, you need an onion. So get a nice large onion and get ready to chop it fairly finely. Yeah. Chop the onion in about fine to medium dice. And set that aside. You'll also need two to four cloves of minced garlic. So just get your garlic. If you give the clove a whack, that kind of loosens the outer peel and makes it easier to get the hard, dry peel off. And then chop your garlic up. As I said before, this is a home-style dish. It was one of my favorites. My mother used to cook this quite often, and I always loved it. The minestra, the orzo, is just such a different pasta. I love it. And it's very easy to make. The hardest part is actually cleaning up the chicken. You could even use... Uh, for the chicken, you could even use the skinned, boneless chicken breasts, which don't require very much work at all. However, bone-in pieces do add a little bit more flavor. Okay, just finely chop your garlic and add it to your onions that you have set aside. And don't worry about these little ends where the garlic has sprouted a bit. They're still good. They don't really need to be cut off for any reason. Just include them. As 
So now we've got our onions and our garlic. You'll need to chop up two carrots. Wash them. Trim off the ends. You could peel them if you wanted to. I don't because I don't think it really makes much difference, but if you really wanted them peeled, just go ahead and peel them. Looking for little, little teeny cubes. Now the addition of carrots, that's something I think that's just traditional with my family. My grandmother did it. My mother does it. But I've seen other recipes for chicken minestra without any carrots. I like it because it adds an extra little bit of texture, an extra bit of color, and carrots are sweet and they just add to the overall sweetness of the dish with onions, cinnamon, tomato. Okay, so now we have our pile of carrots. Our vegetables all are all ready and now we need to brown our chicken. When you're browning anything, of course, the first thing you want to do is get your pan hot. And I think this pan is hot. I want to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. I don't need a whole lot because the chicken's got its skin and it still has little bits of fat on it. Now let the oil heat up. While the oil is heating, I want to give the chicken one last pat down with a paper towel to make sure that the side I put into the oil isn't going to have any excess water. And I think we're all ready. So in go the chicken pieces, one at a time. I'm going to put them in skin side down. You can hear them sizzling. Just let them stay in the saute pan until they're well browned on one side, then turn them over. Now as far as this goes, this plate that I had them drying on, this is another thing where I would want to take the time to wash this plate very carefully in very hot water, hot soapy water, even though I'm going to put it in the dishwasher. I don't want to have any uh, bacteria running around in my kitchen if I can help it. The chicken is browned on one side, so I'm just going to turn everything And remember, you're just browning. You don't have to worry about the chicken being cooked all the way through. It will bake in the oven. So I'll just brown this side, and then we'll get ready for some other things. The chicken is browned nicely on both sides. So now I'm just going to transfer the pieces to my large baking dish or roasting pan. Add the onion and garlic to the oil left in the frying pan and brown the onion well. These onions are now golden brown and so I'm going to just turn the heat off and go to adding the flavorings to this mixture in the pan. I want to add one six ounce can of tomato paste. Nice and thick. And again, the tomato paste, because it's so concentrated and it's been cooked such a long time, it has a little bit of sweetness on its own. To flavor this, I want to add a half teaspoon of cinnamon. And as I said before, 
cinnamon and tomato. It's just a classic, classic Greek combination. Half teaspoon of cinnamon. And to go with the cinnamon, of course, you have to have nutmeg. Quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. And a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Now be sure you don't overdo the allspice. A little less than a quarter teaspoon is fine, but just don't overdo that. To balance this all out, add a teaspoon of oregano, at least a teaspoon, heaping teaspoon. That's heaping. And you need some salt. Anywhere from one teaspoon to a teaspoon and a half of salt. Now the reason you're going to add so much salt is the chicken needs some salt while it's cooking to flavor it but then you're going to add the noodles. It's all going to bake together and they're going to need some salt. So add at least a teaspoon of salt. To this, you want to add two cups of hot water or hot broth. And I have some water that's been heating on the stove. So I want to start with two cups. There's no real reason to cook this. All you need to do is just blend everything together. And tomato paste is so thick, you really need hot water in order to uh, combine it with a liquid. It needs to be hot. Okay, that looks just about right, and now we can put everything together in a baking pan, in the baking pan. Now we have our brown chicken, our sauce, and our chopped carrots. We're going to put them all together in the roasting pan and cook the chicken in the oven for about 20 minutes. So just take the carrots and sprinkle them evenly in the pan. Don't let any pieces stay on top of the chicken. Okay. Now take the sauce and pour that over the chicken in the pan. And distribute that evenly too. You want to bake this covered in a 375 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes until the chicken is just done. So I'm going to get some heavy duty aluminum foil now and cover my pan. And into the oven it goes. Now remember the chicken doesn't have to be completely cooked at the end of this period. The real thing you want to make sure happens is that the carrots are tender. It's going to bake an additional 20 minutes afterwards. This is just a first baking to get the chicken mostly cooked. So in it goes for about 15-20 minutes. It's been 15 minutes so I'm going to take the chicken out of the oven and get ready to add the minestra. Okay, now take the foil off or whatever cover you have off and uh, just be watchful of escaping steam. Right now it's a delicious dish all on its own, but there's more. This is the time to add the minestra or orzo. I'm just going to push the chicken pieces over to the side. I'm adding a full pound of the minestra or orzo. If you're serving just four people, 
you might want to just use three quarters of a pound. But as I said before, this is one of my favorite things. I don't care if there's a lot more pasta than chicken. I don't really care about the chicken at all. It's the minestra that I love. So the more there is, the better for me, the more for me to eat. Now to this, you want to add about three cups of very, very hot water, almost boiling. Because the orzo is uncooked and it's going to bake in the oven. So I'm adding three cups of hot, almost boiling water, or you could have broth, or you could do half and half. A little bit of broth, a little bit of uh, water. Just mix the pasta in. It's very watery right now, but that's okay because this is all going to bake up. And redistribute the chicken pieces. Cover it up and it's back into the oven again for 15 minutes. I'm going to bake this for an additional 15 minutes. Then I want to check it to see how the moisture is doing with the orzo. First of all, I want to make sure that my nestor is cooked. And secondly, I want to make sure that it's not overly dry. So in 15 minutes, we'll be back to check it. The chicken in my Nestra has been baking for about 15 minutes. I want to take it out and check it. I'm looking for a few things, and so now is a good time to just take a look at how it's doing. All you need to do is just remove about half of the cover if you've got it with aluminum foil. Now I just want to see if it needed more water, and I want to see how far along the Minestra is. Depending on the brand, it can take longer to bake. It can be thicker. This is a pretty thick pasta. Others are thinner. Okay. Probably another 10 minutes in the oven will do fine. Also, at this time, you want to add some additional salt, and this does need some more salt. I'm going to take all the foil off. And some pepper. Mix this all up, and then I'm going to stick it back in the oven for about 10 minutes. At this point, it's kind of a check as you go. Bake it for 10 minutes, check it. Bake it for another 10 minutes, check it. What you want is to get the orzo, get the minestra completely cooked but you don't want things to dry out, so you might have to add some additional water. So it's good to keep that hot water on hand. You could also do all of this on the stove top in a big Dutch oven. When you do that, you're going to have to keep stirring the orzo every few minutes because it'll have a tendency to stick to the bottom of the pan. I'm trying to redistribute things a little bit. Okay, this is fine. I'm going to cover it up and put it in the oven for 10 minutes. And in it goes for 10 more minutes. The chicken in my nestra is done. I took the cover off for the last five minutes of baking. I'm going to serve up one piece of chicken. Now, as the minestra sits, it will get thicker. You really shouldn't bake it until it's completely dry because then it will be really hard to eat. This is kind of juicy now, and that's just fine. Give myself some big scoopfuls of this. Just delicious. 
It looks so pretty and it tastes so good too. Now, Greek people traditionally eat this kind of dish with plain unsweetened yogurt. Take a nice big spoonful of plain unsweetened yogurt, put it on the side, and as you take a forkful of the cinnamony minestra, take a little bit of yogurt. It's a delicious contrast in flavors, the sour of the yogurt, the sweetness, the richness of the cinnamon and tomato sauce. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful combination. You can sprinkle the pasta with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Watch my technique. I'm going to swoop down, get a little bit of yogurt with a, a glob of minestra. I love this stuff. Oh. Hey, 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 hey. You get your own. 